the concept of angels has been a fundamental part of the Catholic faith for centuries. According to Catholic tradition, angels are spiritual beings created by God to serve as messengers and guardians. However, there is much debate surrounding the hierarchy and number of angels in the Catholic faith. In this post, we will explore the different orders of angels and their roles within the divine hierarchy. Additionally, we will delve into the question of how many angels exist in total, according to Catholic doctrine. Hierarchical Organization Though the angels appearing in the earlier works of the Old Testament are strangely impersonal and are overshadowed by the importance of the message they bring or the work they do, there are hints regarding certain ranks in the heavenly army. After Adam's fall, paradise is guarded against our first parents by cherubim, who are God's ministers, though nothing is said of their nature. Only once again do the cherubim figure in the Bible, in Ezekiel's glorious vision, where they are described at great length, Ezekiel chapter 1, and are actually called cherubs in Ezekiel chapter 10. The ark was guarded by two cherubim, but we are left to conjecture what they were like. It has been suggested with great probability that we have their counterparts in the winged bulls and lions guarding the Assyrian palaces, and also in the strange winged men with hawks' heads who are depicted on the walls of some of the ancient Assyrian buildings. The seraphim, another order of angels, appears only once in the Bible, in the vision of Isaiah chapter 6, verse 6. The term archangel occurs only in St. Jude and 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 15. But St. Paul has furnished us with two other lists of names of the heavenly groups. He tells us in Ephesians chapter 1 verse 21 that Christ is raised up above all principality and power and virtue and dominion. And, writing to the Colossians in chapter 1 verse 16, he says, In him were all things created in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominations or principalities or powers. It is to be noted that he uses two of these names of the powers of darkness when in chapter 2 verse 15 he talks of Christ as despoiling the principalities and powers triumphing over them in himself. It's also worth noting that only two verses later he warns his readers not to be seduced by any religion of angels. He seems to put his seal upon a certain lawful angelology and at the same time warn them against indulging in superstition on the subject. We have a hint of such excesses in the Book of Enoch, where the angels play quite a disproportionate part. Similarly, Josephus tells us that the Essenes had to take a vow to preserve the secret names of the angels. We have already seen in Daniel chapter 10, verses 12 to 21, how various districts are allotted to various angels who are referred to as their princes, and the same feature reappears even more prominently in the apocalyptic angels of the seven churches, though the precise meaning of the term is unknown. The treatise De Coelesti Hierarchia, attributed to Saint Denis the Areopagite, and which had such a strong influence on the scholastics, goes into great detail about the hierarchies and orders of the angels. It is generally agreed that this work was not created by Saint Denis and must have been completed centuries later, though the doctrine regarding the choirs of angels has been received in the church with extraordinary unanimity, even though no proposition touching the angelic hierarchies is binding on our faith. The following passages from St. Gregory the Great, Homily 34 on the Gospels, will give us a clear idea of the view of the church's doctors on the point, quote, We know on the authority of Scripture that there are nine orders of angels, viz. angels, archangels, virtues, powers, principalities, dominations, throne, cherubim, and seraphim, that there are angels and archangels nearly every page of the Bible tell us, and the books of the prophets talk of cherubim and seraphim. St. Paul, too, writing to the Ephesians, enumerates four orders when he says, above all principality and power and virtue and domination. And again, writing to the Colossians, he says, whether thrones or dominations or principalities or powers. If we now join these two lists together, we have five orders, and adding angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we find nine orders of angels, unquote. St. Thomas, following St. Denis, divides the angels into three hierarchies, each of which contains three orders. Their proximity to the Supreme Being serves as the basis of this division. 
In the first hierarchy, he places the seraphim, cherubim, and thrones. In the second, the dominations, virtues, and powers. In the third, the principalities, archangels, and angels. Raphael, Michael, and Gabriel are the only names of specific angels found in the Bible. These names denote the angels' respective qualities. Uriel and Jeremiel's names come from apocryphal Jewish books like the Book of Enoch, while many others are found in other apocryphal sources like that Milton cites in Paradise Lost. The number of angels. The number of angels is frequently stated as enormous, for example, in Daniel chapter 7 verse 10, Apocalypse chapter 5 verse 11, Psalm 67 verse 18, and Matthew chapter 26 verse 53. From the use of the word host, Sabaoth, as a synonym for the heavenly army, it is hard to resist the impression that the term Lord of hosts refers to God's supreme command of the angelic multitude, as referenced in Deuteronomy chapter 33 verse 2 and chapter 32 verse 43. The parable of the 100 sheep, Luke chapter 15 verses 1 to 3, is interpreted by the church fathers as a reference to the relative numbers of men and angels, despite the fact that this may seem fanciful. The scholastics see the abundance of numbers as a crucial component of the angelic host's perfection, once more following St. Denis treatise. In short, we have no idea exactly how many angels there are, but based on many verses from the Bible, we can say that this number is very large. It could be millions, billions, trillions, or even some larger number. Despite the uncertainty surrounding the exact number of angels, what is clear is that they are believed to exist in a hierarchical order. At the top of this hierarchy are the seraphim, followed by the cherubim, thrones, dominions, virtues, powers, principalities, archangels, and finally, angels. Each level of this hierarchy has its own unique characteristics and responsibilities within the divine plan. While it may be difficult for us to fully comprehend the vastness and complexity of this celestial hierarchy, 